Hello and welcome to episode number 45. Stephen Ellison aka Flying Lotus is one of the most eclectic producers of our generation, a pioneer of the wonky genre, an electronic music subgenre that has off-kilter beats which fuses many genres including hip-hop, glitch, electro-funk, jazz and chiptune, Flying Lotus has gone from success to success which has led him to his 14-year production career. And you could say a lot of that success is due to his consistent evolution from each studio album to the next. I like to think of Flying Lotus albums as a library of sonic emotion, few lyrics and vast soundscapes. Flying Lotus is someone who is influenced by themes of death, whether of his mum or his great aunt Alice Coltrane, the wife of the legendary Johnny Coltrane. He sees death as an opportunity to do things in the spirit of those who have passed, learning from their energy and allowing new and fresh interpretations. His fundamental aim is to bring magic to people in his own way. Even in 2019 he said that he still cared about this, to be connected to the work and indirectly connected to the listeners. To be engaged after a 13-14 year long career is a huge accomplishment. His grandmother Marilyn used to be part of a Motown hitmaking group. I think it's that sense of connectedness that's helped him become who he is, being exposed to a lot of variations of different genres of music is one thing, but for example when he zoned out to a Kamasi Washington solo, it made me as a listener realise that he actually also enjoys the study of creativity and a desire to be spiritually free through this art form, and that's a true path in his eyes, to liberation. I feel it's helped him to remain fresh to his audience, but at the same time, give him a reason to grow as an individual. 1983 was a free-form introduction of Flying Lotus to the world, a foray of highly developed beats on which to anchor several competing musical concepts at once. This was a fresh pull into the hip-hop and wonky production world with skipping drums, frantic bass lines and manipulated jazz samples. Now, this was seen as a great project for those who loved beat production. While not a perfect album, it felt experimental enough that the freshness got people's attention and it certainly did the job in 2006. A sonically textured album based on crackles and buzzes is what Los Angeles was, reacting to rhythm. It's a stylistic maze that also takes on the themes of the very city, titled From Melt demonstrating the soothing heat of the Californian sun and Riot, which then looks at its dark underbelly. It's a seamless album. It certainly keeps you engaged because you pay attention to the finer details. Whenever I listen to this, I've never felt like something is out of place, as odd as that is to say. Keep in mind that this was the year Jay Dilla died in, and the same year that rap became mainstream. Cosmogramma will always be seen as Flying Lotus's best, pulling from jazz, hip-hop, video game sounds and much more while also being dense. Ellison's ability here to pull together such vastly different universes of sounds is a remarkable feat. It's a fluid mass that shapeshifts. That's the best way I can describe how the tracks evolve. There are fragments of different universes and here more than ever each track exhibits a feeling, frenetic or lost. Try to listen to each track and imagine an emotion. German haircut, for example, made me think of being lost in an endless array of European bars late at night. Ellison's aim to include tension and release here on Until the Quiet Comes is definitely achieved. It's more peaceful, it has ambiance, it floats. I'd really argue this is one of the most coherent albums and one of the most abstract at the same time from his discography. I feel like this album is an attempt to wander the subconscious, weaving in and out of dreams. Erica Badu here, for example, feels celestial, while getting there feels like a quieter part of a noir thriller. 38 minutes of a rush. That's what your dead is. Sometimes there's a tough bop going on, sometimes there's hip-hop hooks, and sometimes there's just pulsating energy to this album. You can hear Thundercat's bass at a low end, Moment of hesitation with Herbie Hancock is also an insane head spin with freakouts galore. Whenever I listen to the short tracks of Your Dead, I feel a sense of grandness to everything. There's this descent into controlled chaos, and yet it still feels cinematic for me. Flamagra is great to me because there are a ton of great melodies here, and it feels a lot more grounded than the past ethereal projects that he's made. This is more of an awakening. 
you have that tension and release of Until the Quiet Comes, but in its own carefully orchestrated way. The keys on Hot October are lush and give life, and Anderson Pack's Moore has a shuffle that immediately makes you want to bop your head. I feel like this is a refined curation of different experiences. It's so far from 1983 that you would and you wouldn't recognize this as the same artist. After having listened to Flying Lotus for a long time, I feel like Inverted Audio best describes him. Of him, they said, obsessively listening to and repeating these movements, hearing and translating the ancestral voices emanating from the embers of these old sounds. He brings about an altogether new connection to the past.